The next inventory valuation method we are going to look at is the LIFO method. So last in, first out. Under this method, when we are issuing inventory to production, we issue it at the most recent available price. So in other words, we take the units which we purchased most recently and give them to the production department. So under our LIFO method, issues are valued at the most recent available price. Like in the last session, we are going to go through an exercise where we record the receipts and issues for a particular month, this time using the LIFO method. And what we are going to discover is that the LIFO method will give us a different valuation on the issues and a different closing inventory value to the FIFO method we saw in the previous session. So, having a look at our example again, same information in relation to Holly Park Limited. We're going to be going through it in the very same way as we looked at the last session. This time, though, we're using our LIFO method. Now, <clears throat> we need our table again. So, we'll have our date. Quantity, unit value, total value of that transaction, remaining inventory units, and our remaining inventory value. It's going to begin the same way as the previous exercise. So we look at the top of the information we have, which is our opening inventory of 300 units with a total value of 600 pounds. So on the 1st of the 12th, we have our opening inventory, 300 units, unit value 2 pounds, Total value, 600. And that will be the same as the total inventory in our warehouse. Our next transaction then is on the 7th of the 12th. We have a receipt. We receive or purchase 200 units with a unit value of 220. So, total value of the transaction, £440. Add that on to our existing inventory. And now, in our warehouse, we have 500 units with a total value of £1,040. Okay. What happens next? On the 8th of the 12th, we issue 400 units. And this is where things will start looking different. So we'll record the 8th of the 12th. We have our first issue. 400 units in total. Now, under the LIFO method, when we are issuing units, we are going to issue our most recently purchased units. Clearly, we can see that our most recently purchased units will be the 200 we bought on the 7th of December. So we're going to issue these 200 units first. So we have 200 units at 220. Now we need to get to 400 units in total so the other 200 units we are going to take from our next most recently purchased um, set of units, which will be our opening inventory. 
So the remaining 200 units will be valued at two pounds each. Now we're just going to take note when we issue inventory that we have done so. So from our receipt on the 7th of the 12th, we have now issued all 200 of those units. From our opening inventory of 300 units, we have now issued 200 of those as well. Back to our information for the 8th of the 12th, so the total value of our issue, 200 by 220 plus 200 by just two pounds gives us a total issue value of 840. If we update our running inventory totals, we've taken away 400 units with a total value of 840. We are left with 100 units with a value of 200 pounds. Okay, so that's our first issue complete. Let's see what happens next. On the 11th of the 12th, we have our receipt of 250 units. So we'll add that in. The 11th of the 12th. Receipt. of 250 units with a unit value of 250, total value 625, so we just need to add that on. Okay, so now we have 350 units in inventory in total with a total value of £825. Okay, so next bit of information, we issued 200 units on the 14th of December. So 14th of the 12th, we have an issue. of 200 units. What value are we going to place on this issue? We're using the last in first out method so we are going to issue our most recently purchased units. So we are going to take these 200 units from the 250 units we purchased on the 11th of December. So we are going to issue 200 of those 250 units. So we have 200 units at 250 each in our issue. Gives us a total issue value of 500. Updating our totals, we're taking away 200 units. The total value of 500. So that leaves us with 150 units with a value of 325. Our next event is a receipt on the 17th of the 12th. The 17th of the 12th, we purchased 150 units with a unit value of 280, total value of 420. So if we just add that on, we now have 300 units with a total value of 745. Finally then, on the 20th of December, we have an issue of 100 units. So where are we going to take this issue from? Well, our most recently purchased units were the 150 we purchased on the 17th of December. 
So these are the ones we are going to use for our issue. So we have 100 units with a unit value of 280 each. So the total issue value is 280. Taking that from our running totals, so we are left with then 200 units with a total value of 465. Okay, now let's just think about where these closing inventory units have come from. We have just issued 100 units at 280 each, and we issued them from our purchase on the 17th of the 12th. So we're just going to have a look through our receipts for the month and see what units have we left over. Let's have a look. <clears throat> well, as we have noted as we've gone through, when we've issued each batch of our inventory, this should be straightforward. Our opening inventory was 300 units. We have issued 200 of those units to production, which means at the end of the period we have 100 units of our opening inventory left in the warehouse. And each of those units has a value of two pounds. So we'll just note that down. Our closing inventory then. The first thing we have left over is the remaining opening inventory of 100 units with a value of two pounds each. So that's 200 in total. Continuing on through, on the 7th of the 12th, we purchased 200 units, but we issued all 200 of those units throughout the course of the month. On the 11th of the 12th, we purchased 250 units, and we issued 200 of those units. So at the end of the month, we still have 50 of these units left in our warehouse each one with a value of £2.50. So, we also have remaining from our receipt on the 11th of the 12th, 50 units by 250, which gives us 125 in total. Continuing on through, our next receipt was on the 17th of the 12th. We purchased 150 units, of which we have issued 100 to production. So the last 50 units we have in our warehouse are from this batch and have a value of £2.80. So if we add that in, we have remaining from the 17th of the 12th receipt, 50 units by £2.80 gives us 140. If you add those three values together quickly on your calculator, you will get to 465, which is what we said was the value of our closing inventory of 200 units. The little extra bit we've done is just to understand which batches does our closing inventory come from. Now, before we finish up, we just want to consider from the last session we saw that when we applied the FIFO method, our closing inventory value was equal to 545 pounds. Notice that under the FIFO method, the closing inventory value 
is much higher than it is under the LIFO method. Let's have a look back at the original information in the question so that we can understand why this is. If we look back at what we were told for the month, as you can see, at the start of the month, our opening inventory had a per unit value of two pounds. Our next purchase cost us two pounds twenty per unit. Then it went up to two fifty, and finally two pounds eighty. The per unit price has been going up and up throughout the period. Now, under the FIFO method. When we issue materials to production, we issue the oldest available inventory, which means at the end of the period we have the most recently purchased inventory left in our warehouse. When prices are rising, our closing inventory value is going to be higher under the FIFO method. Than under the LIFO method. Under the LIFO method, we issue the most recently purchased units, which means at the end of the month we have a mixture of units left over in the warehouse, and it is likely that we will be left with some very old units in our closing inventory. So, if we just note down then. When prices are rising, the FIFO closing inventory value will always be greater than the LIFO closing inventory value. And this is because under the LIFO method, we are using the older, lower prices to value our closing inventory.